All right, hey, this is Baratunde Thurston in my emerging home studio, uh, about to read through the articles of impeachment that were dropped uh, this morning, 10th of December, 2019, year of our science. Uh, all right, so uh, first off, just want to point out that the, the top of the PDF, uh, it shows like the full file name with the directory structure and like the computer hard drive it's on. So it's on the G drive, forget it. <laughs> uh, it's on the G drive in the P directory slash 16 slash AOI, or I guess articles of impeachment or um, ass on the internet, I don't know, slash articles underscore final dot XML. I'm kind of proud of my government for using uh, extensible markup language that is great. I'd be a little irritated if it was like uh, a word perfect file, but not surprised at all. This is going to take a long time if I'm going at this pace. I'm literally going to spend this much time just on the file nomenclature. Okay. So we got Jerry Nadler's signature up top, 116th Congress, first session. What? Pause due to poor connection. Okay. I uh, just want to make sure I said pause due to poor connection on the Instagram. So this is uh, HRES, House Resolution. Boop, there's no, there's no number listed because it hasn't been adopted yet. I think that's how, um, that's how laws work. Uh, impeaching Donald John Trump. I don't think I knew his middle name was John. More like janky. Donald Janky Trump, President of the United States for High Crimes and Misdemeanors. I, I need music. I need a flag. Um, I need those cans with the worms popping out fireworks. That'll come later. Okay. In the House of Representatives, Mr. Nadler submitted the following resolution, which was refer referred to the committee on... Boop. All right, here's the resolution. This is the good part. Impeaching Donald John slash Janky Trump, President of the United States for High Crimes and Misdemeanors. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Resolved that Donald J. Trump President of the United States is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors, and that the following articles of impeachment will be exhibited to the United States Senate. Pause. Go get it. Moment I've been waiting for. Rashida Tlaib was right. Impeach the motherfucker. Okay. It's going to be a lot of expression, a lot of energy. I've been sick for a week, and this is just the medicine I needed. Continuing. Articles of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and of the people of the United States of America, that me, <laughs> definitely me, uh, against Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, for now, they didn't say for now, that's editorializing, President of the United States of America in maintenance and support of its impeachment against him for high crimes and misdemeanors. So that's all still like the introduction. And there's two articles in this thing, so you can kind of get a sense of pacing. Uh, we're about to get to Article 1. Article 1, abuse of power, 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 power. It comes with an echo built in. These PDFs are powerful document formats. The Constitution provides that the House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment. Go House, go House, get your power on, get your power on and that the president shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, end quote. In his conduct of the office of the president of the United States and in violation of his constitutional oath, faithfully to execute the office of the United States and to the best of his abilities, preserve, protect, and defend the constitution of the United States, and in violation of his constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, Donald J. Trump has abused the powers of the presidency. And what? Okay. So I just, I need to unpack this a little bit. And I hate saying words like unpack, like some kind of media pundit, which I sometimes play on TV. But there's, I feel like there's a loophole in this for uh, Mr. Trump in here. So there's like these conditions on which they're bringing these articles of impeachment. Part A, violating his constitutional oath 
faithfully to execute the office of president. So he's he's breaking his oath. We all saw him take that oath. And then he went on like this super dystopic madman rant uh, about, you know, the age of carnage and blood rolling ro- 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 through the streets. It was really disgusting. But he did take an oath. Like we all saw that happen. So he's, he's broken that note. Got part A. Part B, though, wiggle room, and to the best of his ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. I mean, the boy is very unable. So to the best of his ability, that's like a really low bar for a former online steak salesman. You know, so I, I feel like if I'm Trump's lawyer, his unpaid uh, former Mayor 9-11 lawyer, I'd be like, yo, you know my boy can't do this. So why are you going to hold him to account? when he's already acknowledged like his abilities are not the best. Um, and then finally he's violated his constitutional duty. So two out of three uh, house, you nailed it, but I don't think you can hold this president to the best of his ability. Cause that's just, um, well, that's not right. Bless his heart. Okay. So he has abused the powers of the presidency in that using the powers of his high office, president Trump solicited the interference of a foreign government Ukraine, and you got to be specific here because there's a lot of foreign governments involved in this particular administration. So this is about Ukraine. I like the clarity. In the 2020 United States presidential election, he did so through a scheme or course of conduct. In case you don't know what the word scheme means, course of conduct. Oh, no, no, separate. It's not a, not a definition. It's an addition. So a scheme or course of conduct that included soliciting the government of Ukraine to publicly announce investigations that would benefit his re-election, boop, harm the election prospects of a political opponent, boop, and influence the 2020 United States presidential election to his advantage. Booyakasha. So that's three. President Trump also sought. So that's not it. That's it. So it keeps going. It gets better, or in this case, worse. Um, President Trump also sought to pressure the government of Ukraine to take these steps by conditioning official United States government acts of significant value to Ukraine on its public announcement of the investigation. That's not the hell quid pro quo thing. I'm glad we're not using Latin, but just, you know, English is hard enough. President Trump engaged in this scheme or course of conduct for corrupt purposes in pursuit of personal political Benefit. You can't be doing stuff for PPB. Everybody knows that. In so doing, President Trump used the powers of the presidency. Oh, that's alliterative. President Trump used the powers of the presidency in a manner that compromised the national security of the United States and undermined the integrity of the United States democratic process. He thus ignored and injured the interests of the nation. You know, as a member of the nation, I got to say, I feel ignored and I feel severely injured, wounded in my heart area, in my mind space, in my civic muscles. Oh, my civic muscles are like uh, torn asunder by this guy. Also, I feel ignored. So you nailed it on this one, House. I'm just, as the American people, I got to see what uh, my representatives are doing in my name. And so far, I'm co-signing on just about all of this. President Trump engaged in the scheme of course of action through the following means. Uh, here comes some legalized listicle situation. It's like a BuzzFeed list uh, PDF file where you can't copy the text. All right, the following means. Number one, President Trump acting both directly and through his agents within and outside the United States government corruptly solicited the government of Ukraine to publicly announce investigations into A, a political opponent, former Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr., and B, a discredited theory promoted by Russia alleging that Ukraine, rather than Russia, interfered in the 2016 United States presidential election. Okay, so he solicited the Ukrainian government to announce investigations. This was against Biden uh, and into a discredited theory that supported Russia. This is the whole crowd strike situation where your boy, that's my name for this current president, your boy uh, still can't accept the fact that Russia uh, at at a minimum, uh, this is as generous as I can ever be, tried to help him become president. 
not even claiming levels of effectiveness, but they tried. This is super acknowledged fact, except in his cycle bubble. Um, and instead, he's latched onto this other theory that no, 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 it was actually Ukraine, uh, the much tinier nation that has no interest in bringing down America, which sought to uh, fully disrupt our elections. So that's one thing is corruptly soliciting the public announcement of investigations. All right, then two, the second thing your boy did, with the same corrupt motives, that's a level of consistency I'm not sure we can assume. It could be totally different corrupt motives. There's so much corruption in this president. Why would you assume they're the same corrupt motives? Maybe it's another set. But you know, for the sake of argument, with the same corrupt motives, President Trump, acting both directly and through his agents within and outside the United States government, conditioned two official acts on the public announcements that he had requested. Condition two official acts on those announcements. All right, so Ukraine, you got to make these announcements against uh, Biden because that helps me and uh, against your own fake involvement in the 2016 election because that helps me. That's one. Two, um, to, when you do that, uh, you're going to get some things. You're going to get some goodies. And uh, goodie A, <laughs> the release of $391 million of United States taxpayer funds that Congress had appropriated on a bipartisan basis for the purpose of providing vital military and security assistance to Ukraine to oppose Russian aggression and which President Trump had ordered to spend it. Yeah, you grabbed up the money. You pulled a, oh man, you uh, you raided the stash house. That money was already predetermined, um, legally predetermined. And you roll up there like Omar with a shotgun, uh, just trying to take the loot. It's not your loot to take. I know this president used to just grabbing all kinds of things that don't belong to him. Uh, women's private parts, uh, foreign aid, uh, you know, due process, just grabbing that stuff. Uh, but you can't do that, uh, at least not without being called out on it. So one, you held up the money, uh, you stuck up $391 million. Uh, B, a head of state meeting at the White House, which the president of Ukraine sought to demonstrate continued U.S. support for the government of Ukraine in the face of Russian aggression. So yeah, that meeting, I think a lot of people haven't really um, fully understood the importance of Zelensky wanting to be seen in public at the White House with the president. That's a signal to your other boy, Vladimir Putin. Yo, you mess with me, you mess with these United States, you know what I'm saying? But Trump is like, no, nah, I don't want to be seen with you. I'm not going to have your back like that. And so he left Ukraine kind of stranded on their own um, at such a critical time, because this is also a very new president. The, the dude just got in the office earlier this year. So he's trying to demonstrate to his own people and to not his people, AKA the Putinites, uh, you don't want to mess with me. You don't want to mess with me. Okay, so the third thing, the third thing. So remember the first thing, he's uh, got this corruption uh, soliciting these public announcements. The second thing, uh, he uh, withheld official government action, a White House visit and $391 million of dollars. And then there's a third thing, because uh, good things come in threes. Faced with the public revelation of his actions, President Trump ultimately released the military and security assistance to the government of Ukraine, but has persisted, like the crime's still happening in openly and corruptly urging and soliciting Ukraine to undertake investigations for his personal political benefit. Here come those PPBs again. And that is striking. I think this is what makes uh, your boy so special. Uh, this, the lack of shame. He is, is you, you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar and as you're being reprimanded for having your hand in the cookie jar, you put your other hand in the cookie jar. You got, all of your hands are tied up in cookies that don't belong to you. That's the level of brazenness that this dude is committed to. Didn't mean for that to rhyme, but I guess I'm inspired by this flare-up of democratic oversight. Small d, democratic. All right, these actions were consistent with President Trump's previous invitations of foreign interference in the United States elections. Uh, that would be back in the 2016 election. Hey, Russia, if you're listening, uh, get at Hillary's super duper important emails, which are definitely more important than all of my actual crimes. And also uh, China. Uh, China, uh, why don't you investigate Biden? China, why don't you? This dude. So they got him on all that. 
in all of this, and I guess for a sense of pacing, um, we're at page five of nine. If you've just tuned in, I'm Baratun Day Thurston, and I am doing a public service of uh, articulating the articles of impeachment uh, filed in the House on this 10th of December, 2019. In all of this, President Trump abused the powers of the presidency. There goes that alliteration again, that poetry abused the powers of the presidency, <laughs> the presidency by ignoring and injuring national security and other vital national interests to obtain an improper personal political benefit. Mm -hmm. I, I, yep, that sounds right. Well, wrong, but uh, correct. He has also betrayed the nation. This is such big words. This is great. I didn't know they could still use language like this. I thought it would all be like gifts and memes and Helvetica bold, but this is actually well-crafted language. He has also betrayed the nation by abusing his high office to enlist the foreign power in corrupting democratic elections. Wherefore, President Trump, by such conduct, has demonstrated that he will remain a threat to national security and the Constitution if allowed to remain in office and has acted in a manner grossly incompatible with self-governance and the rule of law. Grossly incompatible with self-governance. This is not how we do it. And the rule of law. <clears throat> President Trump thus warrants impeachment and trial, removal from office, and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. I've been saying this. I just want to, like, so there's this phenomenon that I recall from so much time in New York City. And as anyone in the U.S. probably knows this, when the New York Times writes about a trend, it's already too late. The New York Times starts doing uh, articles about your neighborhood, say Highland Park. Uh, it's already done. And so I think when uh, when the U.S. Congress finally gets his act together to say that this dude is, should be disqualified from holding and enjoying any office of honor, trust, or profit under the U.S., yeah, we done known that. Uh, unfortunately, people who had the power to stop this sooner didn't because they all chose to profit and put their interest above that of the nation as well. I'm looking at you, media, NBC Apprentice. Rudy Giuliani, Republican Party, name your co-conspirator. But I digress. Let us get to Article 2. Article 2, obstruction of Congress. Congress, Congress. I love this fucking echo effect. <clears throat> the Constitution provides that the House of Representatives shall have sole power of impeachment, and that the president shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. It's like a copy and paste job from the first article. I guess all articles of impeachment got to open with this standard line. It's like a form letter for, for impeachment. Democracy is amazing. In his conduct of the office of president of the United States and in violation of his constitutional oath faithfully to execute the office of president of the United States and to the best of his ability, you know how I feel about that, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and in violation of his constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, Donald J. S. Fajanki Trump has directed the unprecedented, categorical, and indiscriminate defiance of subpoenas issued by the House of Representatives pursuant to its sole power of impeachment. This is important. This wasn't just a copy and paste job. They're reestablishing that they have this power this constitutionally designated power, the sole power of impeachment. The sole power. Oh, that's what's up. See, I knew the founders was black. <laughs> Congress has the sole power. Okay. Somebody grab a gift for that. The sole power. All right. <laughs> I'm going to be doing that for the rest of this reading. <laughs> so they have this power, but your boy has been defying them. And there's a lot of ways for presidents to kind of slow roll and not comply and go to the courts. But on this, the power to impeach, which is so unequivocal, so clear, you can't, uh, you can't just resist that without consequence. So he's abused the power of the presidency in a manner offensive to, I'm offended, 
and subversive of, I feel subverted, the Constitution in that. <clears throat> I really should have gotten some more water. The House of Representatives has engaged in an impeachment inquiry focused on President Trump's corrupt solicitation of the government of Ukraine to interfere in the 2020 United States presidential election. That they did. As part of this impeachment inquiry, the committees undertaking the investigation served subpoenas seeking documents and testimony deemed vital to the inquiry from various executive branch agencies and offices and current and former officials. Indeed, they did. That's some normal stuff. In response, without lawful cause or excuse, President Trump directed, and it's so important, this wasn't just some random uh, floozies in the White House, President Trump directed executive branch agencies, offices, and officials not to comply with those subpoenas. President Trump thus interposed the powers of the presidency against the lawful subpoenas of the House of Representatives. That will be a clash of the branches, a thriller in Manila, and assumed to himself functions and judgments necessary to the exercise of the sole power of impeachment vested by the Constitution in the House of Representatives. This is uh, so, such a throwback. This is the kind of language that's in the Declaration of Independence when they're talking about the abuses of King George. And you, when, you, when they use words like thus interpose the powers of the presidency against the lawful subpoenas and assume to himself in quite an authoritarian manner, I might suggest, functions and judgments um, to exercise the sole power of impeachment vested by the Constitution, which is what governs us, not personality, in the House of Representatives. President Trump abused the powers of his high office through the following means. And we got another one, two, three knockout. Number one, directing the White House to defy a lawful subpoena by withholding the production of documents sought therein by the committees. Great. Number two, directing other executive branch agencies and offices to defy lawful subpoenas and withhold the production of documents and records from the committees. In response to which, the Department of State Office of Management and Budget, Department of Energy, Department of De and Department of Defense refused to provide a single document or record. Pausing for interpretation and flowery commentary. Uh, I don't think I fully recognize the level of stymieing. The stymification game is off the charts here. We know so much about what's going on with Ukraine, despite, not because of, lawful compliance with opinions. We have nothing from the Department of State. We've heard from people like Fiona Hill. We've heard from Bill Taylor, but that's not official of Department of State documents that were sought. Those are humans doing their constitutional duty, putting the nation before their personal interests, but there's probably so much more dirt. Office of Management and Budget, which does the allocation and didn't in this case. We don't know that from a documentary perspective what was going on in there. We haven't gotten a paper trail. Department of Energy, where your boy, uh, who used to be really dumb, uh, but then he got those eyeglasses, Rick Perry. Remember when Rick Perry was a, was a fucking idiot? But then he became a genius when he put those glasses on and got himself involved in this genius scheme running the Department of Energy. There's probably some stupid ass emails over there about his involvement uh, and the Department of Defense, which of course has an interest in uh, providing defense support to Ukraine against Russia, which is engaged in an unlawful um, acquisition, uh, annexation uh, of Crimea over there. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I think I read too much news. Okay. That was only number two. That was only number two, y'all. There's a third one. Directing current and former executive branch officials not to cooperate with the committees in response to which nine administration officials defied subpoenas for testimony. Nine. Nine. I didn't know it was nine of them. Namely, John Michael Mick Mulvaney. I wonder why this acting White House press secretary might not want to make more public pronouncements. Oh, what an idiot. Robert B. Blair, John A. Eisenberg, Michael Ellis, Preston Wells Griffith. If that's not a billionaire, that's a waste of a name. If your name is Preston Wells Griffith, you better have at least three buildings named after you or get out of my face. Uh, Russell T. Vaught, which sounds like the name of like an evil corporation in a sort of Blade Runner-esque future, like Vought Cork. Uh, Michael Duffy, 
which definitely is like Simpsons beer name. Uh, Brian McCormack and T. Ulrich Brookbull. No comment. I got a funny name. He's got a funny name. You got enough trouble as it is, T. These actions were consistent with President Trump's previous efforts to undermine United States government investigations into foreign interference in, uh, in the United States elections. All right, that's copy and paste. So we are here on page eight of nine. <clears throat> we're almost there. Oh, there's a little liquid. <sighs> Through these actions, President Trump sought to arrogate to himself. <laughs> arrogate, hold up. That's not a regular everyday word. Arrogate, take or claim something without justification. This is an arrogant motherfucker. Yes, he arrogates all day, every day. He is Donald Jarrogate Trump. Okay. Through these actions, President Trump sought to arrogate to himself the right to determine the propriety, scope, and nature of an impeachment inquiry into his own conduct, as well as the unilateral prerogative to deny any and all information to the House of Representatives in the exercise of its sole power of impeachment. Yeah, you can't, like, I would love to do that as an accused criminal to just be like, yo, um, judge, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to allow these questions. Uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, provide any fingerprints or evidence of my whereabouts. Uh, and actually, this trial needs to end right now uh, because I got to go check out Queen and Slim. This is matinee. Like, you can't, you can't do that. All right. In the history of the Republic. Yeah, we're about to have some lofty claims. Brace thyself. In the history of the Republic, no president has ever ordered the complete defiance of an impeachment inquiry or sought to obstruct and impede so comprehensively the ability of the House of Representatives to investigate high crimes and misdemeanors. This abuse of office served to cover up the president's own repeated misconduct and to seize and control the power of impeachment and thus to nullify a vital constitutional safeguard vested solely in the House of Representatives. In all of this, President Trump has acted in a manner contrary to his trust as, as president and subversive of constitutional government, to the great prejudice of the cause of law and justice, and to the manifest injury of the people of the United States, to which I might add, again, I feel hella injured. Wherefore, President Trump, by such conduct, has demonstrated that he will remain a threat to the Constitution if allowed to remain in office and has acted in a manner grossly incompatible with self-governance and the rule of law. President Trump thus warrants impeachment and trial, removal from office, and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. Oh, shaboom, we did it. We did it, that's the end. Page nine, articles filed, read, sealed, delivered. What? Arrogating mom. Okay, okay. So here's what's gonna happen now. I'm gonna end the recording on this screen so I can just talk to y'all for a minute. Also, I need to be leaving home in like eight minutes, so I might have to wrap this up and do a follow-up later.